Hi, welcome to Peyton Zoo. My name's Jo and I'm about to take you on a mini discovery. Peyton Zoo is a great place to get outside and explore the natural world. I'm here to help you do that with a few simple activities you can do at home or even on your next visit to the zoo. And along the way we'll learn more about our fantastic animals and plants. So today's session is all about plants. So we're going to be finding out what plants need to grow and we're going to be finding out some of the amazing plants that we have here at the zoo. And then our activity today we are going to be making some seed bombs. So to find out about plants, we've come to our gardens department here at the top of the zoo. Now did you know that Peyton Zoo is also a botanical garden? So we've got a fantastic team of gardeners here at the zoo who not only keep our site looking amazing, they also help stop rare and interesting plants from going extinct and they also grow all kinds of plants to provide shelter, food and uh, climbing for our animals as well. And they do all this up here in the greenhouses. So let's head into one of our greenhouses now and see what's growing. This is our greenhouses where most of the plants on our site start life. So what is it that plants actually need to grow? Do you know that? Okay, so they need water, they need light, they need the right temperature and they need nutrients, which is basically food. So as a seed, those nutrients, that food, is inside the seed itself. Once you plant it in the soil and those roots start to grow, then the plant will get that food from the soil itself and it will also get a lot of the water from the soil as well. So having greenhouses on site, nice warm greenhouses that I've stood in at the moment, means that we can grow plants all year round. And having houses like crocodile swamps or tropical trails that are hot all year round as well, means we can grow some plants that actually would normally be found inside hot jungles. So let's have a look what's growing inside our fantastic greenhouse today. I'm going to point out some of the exciting ones. Now next to me here, this plant here, this is called a Titan Arum. Now the Titan Arum has a flower that is actually taller than me. It's about six foot, so about the height of a tall man. And it only flowers every two to three years, so we have to be really, really patient here. And not only that, this bit here that you can see on this plant, this actually happens after the flower. So it flowers first, and then it grows this massive leaf second. Okay, behind me here, this one here, this is called a cycad. Now a cycad is also known as dinosaur food because it's what we call a living fossil. So it has been around since dinosaurs were around and there are certain plants, not this one here, but some plants that can be over a thousand years old. In the greenhouse next door, that's where all of our saplings are. So saplings are when the seeds have just started to shoot. And what you'll find in there is lots of different herbs. And herbs is what we use with the animals. So we'll use them as enrichment. So enrichment's the extra exciting things that we give to animals within the day. So it might be as simple as a herb, which smells lovely, or even sometimes we'll give them whole trees to play with as well. So also next door we've got tree saplings as well and there are some absolutely amazing trees to look out for next time you visit the zoo. So we've actually got some redwoods near our kangaroo paddock, that's the tallest trees in the world. We've got something called ginkgo which is one of the oldest living trees, it's not changed for 200 million years. And do you like chocolate and bananas? I thought so, in which case if you head into Croc Swamp you'll find a cocoa plant which is what chocolate comes from and down in Tropical Trails you'll find a banana plant as well just inside near the waterfall. And of course look out for our monkey puzzle trees, those really tall trees with the spiky leaves. Did you know monkey puzzle trees are either a boy or a girl? Next time you visit take some time to see all the amazing plants on site, see if you can spot some of the ones I just mentioned and also don't forget to thank our gardeners if you see them around and about for making this site look as amazing as it does. So let's head into the classroom now and go and make some seed bombs. So our activity today we are going to be making seed bombs so the things you're going to need for that are you're going to need some compost, you're going to need a little bit of flour, you're going to need some water and you're going to need some seeds as well. Now I'm using a wildflower seed mix. Both the seeds and the compost you can easily pick up from supermarkets so you should be able to get your hands on them pretty simply. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to mix three cups of compost to one cup of flour. So let's tip 
my cup of flour in there and then we're going to need three of my compost. I'm going to try and do it as tidily as I can. One, two, three. Right, give that a quick mix together. And then the next stage after that is you're going to be adding in your seeds. Now when you mix the seeds in, you need to be a little bit careful because you don't want to get them too crushed. So I've got one packet there, I think I'm going to put an extra packet in as well just to make sure that there's plenty of seeds. There we go, and give those a nice gentle mix in. Lovely. Now when it comes to the water, you only want just enough water so that when you make them into the nice balls, they're going to hold together. So let's add just a little bit to start with and give that a mix. If they're too soggy, you'll, have, you'll struggle to uh, shape them into balls. Right. So to start with, you probably want to mix with a spoon, but it's going to be far easier to get your hands in there. So add a little bit more and then I can give it a squish together. If it does go a little bit soggy, just add a bit of extra compost in. That's not going to be a problem. So I think mine probably is a bit soggy. So let's add an extra bit of compost just to soak some of that water up. Lovely. Okay, and then once you've got it all mixed together, that's when you need to start making them into balls. So if I move that out the way and bring in this tray here. And you want to make balls that are kind of small marble size is probably a good size to do and then just pop them on the tray and leave them to dry as simple as that now once they're dry you can take them out and you can throw them on a bare patch of soil and you don't need to crush them or anything like that you just need to leave them the rain will soften them and then you'll be able to watch them grow and you'll have some fantastic wild flowers filling that bare patch of earth Final thing, when you finish making all your seed bombs, don't forget to wash those hands. I'm just going to go and do that quickly now. So there you have it, nice simple activity for you to have a go at this weekend. Get on out there and fill all those bare patches of earth with bright colourful flowers. Now don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this video so you don't miss any of our videos in the future. And our next mini discovery is going to be after half term and that's going to be on bugs. So I'll see you then.